The afternoon grew more dull every moment, and a melancholy wind sounded through the trees, like a giant whistling for his house dog. The sadness of the scene imparted a somber tinge to the feelings of Mr. Winkle, as he made his way to the field of honor. My friend, sir, <clears throat> Mr. Snodgrass. Will you step forward? They are loaded. Do you object to use them? Certainly not. All is ready. Give me your cloak. You will. You have got the packet, my dear fellow. Steady and wing him. Forward. Forward. Mm. Stand firm. Mm. all this that's not the man not the man not the man that's not the person who insulted me last night very extraordinary very the question is whether the gentleman uh, being on the ground uh, must not be considered as a matter of form uh, to be the individual who insulted dr slammer yesterday evening uh, whether he is that individual or not i am not the person i know it uh, then that is an affront to dr slammer and a sufficient reason for proceeding immediately. Pray be quiet, Payne. Why did you not communicate this to me this morning? Because, sir, you described an intoxicated and ungentlemanly person as wearing a coat, which I have the honor not only to wear, but to have invented. The proposed uniform of the Pickwick Club of London. <clears throat> the honor of that uniform I felt bound to maintain, and I therefore, without inquiry, accepted the challenge my dear sir i honor your gallantry i admire your conduct i regret having called you this inconvenience i beg you won't mention it sir i shall feel proud of your acquaintance sir. it will afford me the greatest pleasure to know you sir <clears throat> i think we may adjourn unless mr winkle feels himself aggrieved by the challenge in which case i submit that he has a right to satisfaction no no i am quite Satisfied. Or possibly the gentleman second might feel himself affronted by some observations that fell from me. If so, I shall be happy to give him satisfaction immediately. No, no, I, I, I'm quite satisfied, thank you. May we adjourn now? <laughs> no, 
Do you stay here long? I trust I shall have the pleasure of spending this evening with you in my rooms after this awkward situation. Oh, well, we have some friends here, and I should not like to leave them tonight. Perhaps you and your friends would care to join us at the bull. English girls not so fine as Spanish. Noble creatures, jet hair, black eyes, lovely forms, sweet creatures, beautiful. You have been in Spain, sir? Lived there, ages. In many conquests? Conquests, thousands. Don Bolaro Fisgi, grandi, only daughter. Donna Cristina, splendid creature. Love made a distraction. Jealous father, high soul daughter, handsome Englishman. Donna Cristina in despair, prussic acid. <gasps> Stomach pump in my portmanteau, operation performed, oh, Pilaro, ecstasies, consent to our union, join hands, floods of tears, romantic story, very. <laughs> Is the lady in England now? Dead, sir. Huh? She's dead. Never recovered the stomach pump, undermined constitution, fell a victim. And the father? Remorse and misery. Sudden disappearance. Talk of the whole city, search made everywhere without success. Public fountain in the great square suddenly ceased playing. Weeks elapsed, still a stoppage. Workmen employed to clean it, water drawn off. Father-in-law found sticking head first in the main pipe with a full confession in his right boot. Took him out, fountain played away as well as ever. Will you allow me to note that little romance down, sir? Certainly. Fifty more, you like to hear them. Strange life, mine, not a curious history, not extraordinary, but singular. <clears throat> Friends of mine. <clears throat> Officers of the 97th. Oh. Uh, Lieutenant Tappleton, Mr. Pickwick. Sir. Dr. Payne, Mr. Pickwick. Sir. Mr. Snodgrass, Mr. P oh, you've seen him before. <laughs> uh, Dr. Slammer, Mr. Pickwick. Sir. Mr. Tuffman. I've met that gentleman not before. Indeed. And that person, too, if I'm not mistaken. Slammer. I think I gave that person a very pressing invitation last night, which he thought proper to decline. Oh? You don't say so. You are bound to kick him on the spot. Will you allow me to ask, sir, if that person belongs to your party? No, sir. He's a guest of ours. Oh, he's a member of your club. Certainly not. He never wears the club button. No, never. Ah, now, sir, let me ask you once again whether you choose to give me your card or whether you impose upon me the necessity of pressfully chastising you on the spot. Stay, sir, I really cannot allow this matter to quick. What? Last night. He Haven't I seen you at the theatre, sir? Well, certainly. He is a strolling actor. He acts in a piece at the theatre tonight. An actor? You cannot proceed in this affair, Slammer. Impossible. Quite. Sorry to have placed you in this disagreeable situation. Allow me to suggest the best way of avoiding such an occurrence in future will be to be more select in your choice of companions. Good evening, sir. And allow me to say, sir, that had I been Chapleton, or if I'd been Slammer, I would have pulled your nose, sir, and the nose of every man in this company. Payne is my name, sir. Payne of the 43rd. Good evening, sir. You are right, sir. They are not. I am ashamed at being betrayed into this warmth of feeling. Glass of brandy, gentlemen. With ah. great pleasure, sir. <laughs> you know, I'm sure someone borrowed my blue coat uh, last brandy. night. Brandy. Oh, thank you. Ah, can you read? Mm -hmm. Today, as you all know, we go to visit my friend Mr. Wardle. Now, how do we go to Manor Farm? Mr. Wardle, sir. Ah. Dingley Dell. Mm. About 15 miles cross country. Oh, delicious. Post chaser? Thank you, Mr. Oh, but a post chaser won't hold more than two of us. <laughs> True, sir. Thank you, pardon, sir. <clears throat> uh, 
There's a very nice four-wheel chaser. Thank you. Oh, okay. Seat for two behind mm. and one in front for the gentleman that drives. Oh, that'd be ideal. Mm. Yes. Oh, beg your pardon, sir. That'll only hold three. Uh, oh, yeah. three, yeah. Well, huh. what's to be done? Oh. Well, Come on. Perhaps one of the gentlemen would like to ride, sir. Very good saddle horses, sir. No. And any of Mr. Wardle's men coming to Rochester could bring them back. No. The oh, very thing. Uh, Winkle, would you care to go on horseback? Winkle. Certainly. Nothing would give me greater pleasure. Oh. Ah, then we shall accept your very helpful suggestion. Uh, let the horses be at the door by, um, 11 o'clock. Very good, sir. 11 o'clock it shall be, sir. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's good. It might rain. The sky looks ominous. Gentlemen, post chase for Dingley Delta. Ah. And a horse for these sporting gentlemen. Sporting gentlemen. Ah. Oh, <laughs> I'm out first. My arm, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now. Yes. Oh. Come fit for my digestion. Bless my soul. Oh. I never thought of that. Why? Well, who's to drive? Oh, you, of course. Of course. I? Not the slightest fear, sir. An infant in arms might drive him. He don't shy, uh, does he? He wouldn't shy, sir, if he was to meet a waggy load of monkeys with their tails burned off. <laughs> I'll just get you the ribbon, sir. <laughs> right, now you take hold of the ribbons in your left hand, sir. Your left hand, sir. Hmm? Oh. And in the other hand, you take hold of the whip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. playfulness, sir. Uh, just keep hold of him, shiny William. Blowed if the gentleman weren't to get on the wrong side. Uh, to the side, sir, if you please. Uh, to the side, boy. No, never go round the back side of the horse, sir. You might kick it out. Always round the back side. There you go, sir. Now, foot in the stirrup. Yes. Uh, your yes. left foot in the stirrup, sir. Come round this way, man. Get your foot up like oh, that, oh. sir. Oh. Right, now oh. up and over oh. your ghost. Oh. All right. All right. <laughs> Let them go. Have you stopped? Mr. Winkle? Yes. I say, pick up the whip, there's a good fellow. Oh, <coughs> poor fella. Good old horse. The whip. <coughs> right. Pray, Mr. Thompson, oh. please the other way. Round we go. That's a good, a good chap. Yeah. Right. Now, stand there. Oh, that is most kind of you, Mr. Winkle. It is, from where it's located. <laughs> there we are. <sighs> Well done. Thank you, sir. It's a great Thanks. pleasure, sir. <laughs> uh, come here, horse. Good fella. Good fella. Poor old chap. Good fella. Poor old... Poor old chap. Poor old chap. Oh, now, Mr. Pickwick, I'm awfully afraid that I don't seem to be able to... What am I to do? I don't Stop seem to be able to... The reins. The reins, Mr. Tupman. Have no fear, Mr. Winkle. I am coming. Come straight back. Have no fear. I'm coming. Oh, Mr. Pickwick, you're too kind. Poor fella. Leave him to me. Throw the bridle over his head. Ah, quickly. It doesn't seem to want to obey my instructions. Now I take command. Ah, splendid. Oh, if you could. Yes, it's all right. Horse. Don't worry. Hold him steady, Mr. Pickle. I am, I am. I'll be, I'll be. Please, try and get on him now, will you? I shall. I'm quick, quick. He's following. Don't get my foot into the stirrup. All right, I'll give you a hand. Oh, 
are you, my friend? A little shaky. Oh, good. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Tupman, yeah. how do you fare? Oh, not too ill. Oh. 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 It's like a dream. A hideous dream. Ah. Ah. At last. Let us hope we've found the right place. Astonishing series of adventures. You do look tired. I've had the most extraordinary horse. Not hurt, I hope. Oh, no, no. Glad to hear that. Very. So you've been spilt, eh? Well, you really mustn't concern yourself with trifling accidents. Never mind. Common accident in these parts. Joe? He's asleep again. Joe! Mr. Waldo. Take that horse from that gentleman. Sir? And now, may I introduce my daughters, Emily and Isabella, and my sister, Rachel. You're quite sure you're not hurt? No, no. Now, now come along. Come along. We'll soon have you put to rights. And then I'll introduce you to my mother. Emma, bring out some cherry brandy. And Jane. Needle and thread here, towels oh, and water. Oh, Welcome, yeah. gentlemen. Into the woods and Welcome the to Manor road. Farm. This way, sir. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> ah, here they are. Oh. Feeling refreshed, I trust. Come along in, gentlemen, and meet Mother. Mr. Pickwick, mother. I can't hear you. Mr. Pickwick, grandma. Oh, well, it don't much matter. He don't care for an old woman like me, I dare say. I assure you, ma'am, that nothing delights me more than to see a lady of your time of life heading so fine a family and looking so young and well. Ah, it's all very fine, I dare say, but I can't hear him. Delightful situation, this. Delightful. Delightful. Uh, what say you to a rubber of whist, Mr. Pickwick? Oh, I should like it of all things. Uh, but pray, don't make one up just on my account. Oh, no, I assure you. Mother's very fond of a rubber, aren't you, Mother? A rubber of whist, too, yes. I should like that. <laughs> Joe! Joe! Damn that boy, where is he? Oh, there you are. Uh, Joe! Set out the card table. Yes, sir. Oh, clubs. Oh, clubs. Eight. There. That could not have been played better. I flatter myself. Impossible to have made another trick. Mr. Snodgrass ought to have trumped the diamond. Oh, Mr. Pickett. Well, now, I'm afraid you ought, sir. I'm very sorry. Two by honours makes us eight. <laughs> uh, How many have you got? Five. Miss Rachel, it's your turn to lead. Oh, sorry. A seven <laughs> of diamonds. Oh, uh, seven I can diamonds. go with an eight of diamonds. Eight. Oh, nine. nine. No That's oh. Pope oh. Joe. <laughs> Good girl. Oh, well played, Miss Emily. Good. Now then. Uh, can you one? Can one? I can. Double, oh, single, yes, yes. and the rub. <laughs> Never was such cards. Never was such luck. <laughs> oh, I have enjoyed that. Well played. It's a great pleasure, thank you. I do apologize. Snodgrass is only a game. 
I wonder if you assist me and move that chair around for five minutes. I would love something. Thank you. Do you think my nieces are pretty? I should if their aunt wasn't here. Oh, oh you naughty man. <laughs> but really, if their complexions were a little better, don't you think they would be nice looking girls? Yes, I mean they would. Oh, of course. Hmm. I know what you were going to say. What? You were going to say that Emily stoops. You men are such observers. <laughs> oh, well, you are a quiz. <laughs> oh, what a sarcastic smile. I declare I'm uh, quite afraid of you. Oh. But I know no. what that smile means very well. What does it mean? It means that you think that Emily's stoop is not as bad as Isabella's boldness. Oh, she is bold. Oh, I cannot tell you how wretched it makes me sometimes. I'm sure aunt's talking about stupid so delicious. Dear aunt, do take care of yourself. I'm so afraid you'll catch cold without a silk handkerchief to tie around your dear old head. Do consider your age. Joe! You. Joe! You. <laughs> Damn the boy's gone to sleep again. <laughs> That's the extraordinary boy, that. Does he usually sleep in this way? Goes on errands fast asleep, always snores as he waits at the table. How very odd. I'm proud of that boy. Wouldn't part with him on any account. He's a natural curiosity. <laughs> Joe! Joe! More punch. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, of course. Thank you, sir. Oh, thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Sir, please. Thank you, Joe. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. This is just what I like. The happiest moments of my life have been passed at this fireside. And I'm so attached to it that I keep up a blazing fire here every evening until it actually grows too hot to bear it. <laughs> <laughs> Why, Mother here used to sit before this fireplace on that little stool when she was a girl, didn't you, Mother? You must excuse me talking about this old place, Mr. Pickwick, but I... I love it dearly, and no, no other. Your health, sir. And yours, sir. Ah! Ah! Pleasant, pleasant country. Who could live to gaze from day to day on bricks and slates? who had once felt the influence of a scene like this, who, I ask, could endure it? Hello! Hello! <laughs> oh, hello. How are you? Very well. Beautiful morning, aren't it? Mm. Glad to see you're up so early. Make haste down, and I'll wait for you around the back. Good. <laughs> hey. ah. What's going forward? Why, your friends and I are going out rook shooting before breakfast. <laughs> Mr. Winkle's a very good shot, aren't he? I've heard him say he's a capital one. Uh -huh. But I never saw him aim at anything. <laughs> Come along! A keen hand like you should have been up hours ago. Oh, even to such poor work as this. <laughs> morning. Here's your gun, sir. Oh, morning. <laughs> morning. <laughs> Now, off you go, boys, <laughs> to frighten the rooks. Oh. Now, shall I begin? If you please. Uh, stand aside, then. Stand aside, then, sir. Now for it. Up. Oh, well 
Take him up, Joe. <laughs> and now, Mr. Winkle. It's a hard way. <laughs> Hello? Look at this. Missed fire. Never knew one of them to miss fire before. Why? I don't see anything of the cap. <laughs> Bless my soul, I declare I forgot the cap. <laughs> <laughs> forgot the cap? <laughs> <laughs> what is the cap? What's he saying? It sounds like a lady's name. Rachel? Couldn't possibly be. We'd better carry him home. <laughs> Don't be frightened, my dears. Mr. Tupman has met with a little accident. <laughs> That's all. Throw <laughs> some cold water over her. No. I'm better now. Is, is he wounded? Is he dead? Calm yourself, dear madam. Calm yourself. Then you are not dead. Say, I'm not dead. Don't be a fool, Rachel. What the devil's the use of his saying he's not dead? No, I'm not. Let me lean on your arm. <laughs> ah. Ah. Oh, Miss Rachel. Yes. What's your name? I shall be better presently. Oh, oh dear. Oh. He sleeps. Emily, Bella, hot water and towels for Mr. Tubman's wound. Yes. Are you a cricketer? No. Are you, sir? I was, once upon a time. I subscribe to the club here, but do not play. The grand match is to be played today, I believe. It is. And, of course, you would like to see it. I, sir, am delighted to view any sports which may be safely indulged in and in which the impotent effects of unskilled people do not endanger human life. Mr. Pickwick looked steadily upon Mr. Winkle, who quailed beneath his leader's searching glance. It was settled that Mr. Tupman should be left at home in charge of the females, and that the remainder of the guests, under the guidance of Mr. Wardle, should proceed to the spot where was to be held that trial of skill which was filling Dingley Dell with a fever of excitement. Thank you. 